Welcome back to the Boom Bat Bros podcast. This is episode number 14, and we're excited to be back in the studio. How are you doing, Al? Pretty good here. Been uh, getting my schoolwork done, uh, watching a lot of Bulls games as always, you know, doing pretty good. Yeah, well, welcome back to our podcast if you're a returning listener, and if you're not, uh, welcome to this podcast. We talk about all things hip-hop music, uh, different releases throughout the music industry, stories that are interesting and relevant to recording artists and the likes, and so we keep up with pop culture and all sorts of things, and uh, this episode is going to be a fun one. Oh yeah, for sure. We get a lot of fun stuff to cover here. Lots of great music actually coming out at the beginning of 2022. I'm just seeing like week by week release schedules and there's mm-hmm. some pretty notable artists on our radar yeah. uh, dropping upcoming. So, But at the top of the show, we wanted to actually announce our new schedule for the podcast. So if you'll notice, this one's coming out on Thursday and that's going to be our normal release day going forward. We're going to try and keep the podcast bi-weekly. So we're going to be uploading one every other week on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Central Time. So you can expect the new podcast in video form on YouTube there or go ahead and listen on any podcasting platform that you listen to your shows on. So uh, yeah, we're excited about that. And we're thinking if new releases are normally coming on Fridays, we can listen to the music, you know, live with it for that next week. Mm-hmm. And then once we're ready to talk about it on Thursday night, we can also mention what's going to drop that night for sure. things like that. So, um, but I was also thinking on those off weeks, it might be fun for us to do some live streams and interact with oh, the community yeah. and uh, things like that. So let us know if Wednesdays would be a good day for live streams. We could even do that every week because live streams, we don't really have to perform prepare as much as our podcast yeah, for true. you know there's more content that we're just reviewing live instead of having a whole docket that we put together beforehand so mm-hmm. um let us know on that schedule though and we're excited to be making more videos and podcasts for the boom Bat bros channel as 2022 continues yeah so let's get into it here As far as what we're putting out on YouTube, you can see this podcast has been going strong through 2021, and we're even diversifying our efforts on YouTube this year, as my personal channel, PatG563, actually has content going up there regularly now, uh, starting with this video that I put out last week, our 2022 Goals and Ambitions video. So this is my original YouTube channel. Um, I started this one when I was a kid, you know, just first creating things, uh, youtube.com slash patg54 and have rebranded it now as patg563 to match all of my social channels. So um, yeah, definitely check this video out and see what we're up to in 2022 as things progress. Um, but Al, I, this clip is nostalgic. I mean, oh yeah, for sure. You, you remember, uh, you know, oh, back man. in the basement, <laughs> yeah, working on uh, YouTube videos back in the day. But this is the channel where all that existed. Nice. I hadn't uh, gotten around to like check out this video. I just like uh, saw the like Instagram post you're putting up for it. But I, I didn't know you reused those old clips and therefore that that's cool. Man, you gotta watch this video. Yeah, you, you gotta see what. I mean, I've told you about most of this. So yeah, it, it, yeah. Because be like we we were showing the videos to each other the other day. You were like looking at the old stuff, and I was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll be here. Well. But that wasn't about this at all. Oh, that, yeah. that was just me reviewing things and, and looking over it after oh, this nice. video had already been up. Uh, oh, just my, okay. my o- archive content that's on this channel. We were just being nostalgic. Um, but I, you know, get get into some personal things and tell you about business and everything that I'm wor- working on from a professional and personal perspective in this video in 2022. So definitely check it out if you're interested and Mm -hmm. uh, you know, wanting more content. We're gonna be also getting more music out from me on my Pat G music channel. So um, here's the Pat G563 channel. Definitely go ahead and check it out if you have not already. Um, And yeah, the Pat G music channel though is where all my new music is gonna be going up it should just be, yep, there you go. Yeah, sorry about that. And um, yeah, I got Drop It featuring Marcellus Angel already coming out. And I haven't formally announced this yet, but my next single, Four Bridges, is going to be coming out 2 4 22 
and I'm really excited about that. A music video is going to be accompanying it, and you'll hear the formal announcement uh, this next week on all my social media channels. So get ready, and it should be a really fun song, and I'm just excited for more people to get attuned to my art and the different type of music that I'm trying to present on my project. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And I'm excited to cut up the music video and, you know, finish that and get it out there because I've done music videos for other artists, but never for myself. Mm -hmm. So this is a unique experience and a welcome one too. So I'm excited for all, everything that's going on on that front. Um, but Alec, we mm -hmm. actually have some more for you as far as YouTube channel goes. So what were yeah. you thinking about getting your own channel going? Yeah, so we we're talking about that a little bit. Maybe starting a um, like spin off of this one where I'm talking about like NBA stuff, Chicago sports centered, like and like going out to like national stuff too. Maybe just talking about um, current events and like uh, opinion pieces, stuff like that going on. And so I thought that would be a cool idea. Yeah, we would definitely edit it in the same sort of fashion that Pat G563 video was in. And I'm going to continue to do videos on there, sort of commentary style. And we could apply that same formula to what you're trying to, you know, comment on every week or as often as you want mm -hmm. um, for Chicago sports, NBA, different, um, you know, angles there that you could cover and, mm -hmm. and give your take on so i think it's a really great idea but we need to brainstorm a title for the channel yeah, true true and how we're gonna brand it all we mm -hmm. can work on that but leave your ideas below for alex mm -hmm. channel covering sp all sorts of sports topics yeah i, I know uh, a few guys that uh, and girls in the group too that uh, i met on twitter like last year, like with the Bulls and everything, um, is the like in our tourist we trust community. And there's like a whole like Twitter like community with that stuff. And they've got a uh, podcast that they did have going, but they're like relaunching it now. What are they rebranding that one as? That one's called uh, Bulls Don't Lie now from the like okay. in our tourist we trust. And like that's the blog page that they still have. They mm -hmm. have articles on there about the Bulls. So they've been doing a lot of cool stuff there. That's cool. And I was thinking maybe we could let, collaborate with them. Me make guest appearances over there. Maybe some of the guys that work on the articles and everything come and like talk with me about the Bulls on that channel. So I think we could do a lot of cool stuff there. Yeah, definitely. And I'm just excited to apply all the video editing and fun oh, yeah. YouTube video making skills that I've acquired to these different creative outlet, outlets for us. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's it as far as updates at the beginning of the show here after we've rambled on. Um, mm -hmm. But let's just go ahead and start reviewing new music as 2022 has started with a bang here in January with a handful of albums that we've been anticipating from artists that we really like, um, including Earl Sweatshirt. So mm -hmm. here is his latest album, Sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's the album cover on there we've talked about before in the lead up here. And yeah, it's got... Uh, 10 tracks here and i thought this was a pretty solid project what about you pat yeah i've listened to it probably three or four times it's only 25 minutes so you can go ahead and spin it through quickly and it's a really great project i really like the vibe of it and earl doesn't disappoint with sort of his format i, I feel like mm -hmm. his quick song format he's going to give you um you know verses that are interesting some some bars for sure mm -hmm. but i really like the sound that he sort of move to here and i'm just looking forward to more as this year goes on i mean let's hope that since this was sort of a short project we might get mm -hmm. some more music from him this year um but i've been listening to it quite a bit recently yeah i've been uh having a few listens through i think i'm at like three or four now and uh yeah i've been like a huge fan of the beats that he got on mm -hmm. here and he was um he had a few different like guys that he worked with. Like I know Black Noise is one that was throughout the project. He had like three songs at least. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of interesting beats on here. And I'm like really into them because Earl's been getting like more and more experimental over the past few albums ever since his like debut. And uh, like I feel like this one still has experimental beats, but like there's elements to them and like certain drums they use that like sound like it bangs like mainstream like type stuff, even though it's like really layered and like a different sound in general with like whatever audio samples being used and mm -hmm. all that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think 
the layering on the production here was very detailed for sure oh, like mm-hmm. especially with some of the outros and transitions that they were oh, able yeah. to execute. Was, there were some great transitions for sure even in just a short time span I, I thought it was a really great expression for uh earl and i'm just you know a, a fan of his so i think mm-hmm. i'll just continue to support even if like the the music isn't you know what you would expect from some other artists oh, yeah. exactly yeah like there's some artists where I'm expecting consistency more. If it's like, oh, I like if it sounds like what your last stuff was, that like is still pretty good. But Earl's a guy where like every time he's coming out, I'm expecting him to do like some different like shift on his sound for real and like elevate it to a different level he hasn't gone to before. Because I feel like all of his albums have like a certain like Earl feel to them, but like they all do something different. Definitely. Mm-hmm. What would you say is your favorite track from the track listing? I'm not sure which mine w- which mine would be. Um, I-, I think I got a, a top couple here. Um, like I know a lot of the early ones banged, especially the singles that were put out before 2010 and uh, Tabula Rasa or Ross. I don't know how that's pronounced. Hope it doesn't sound bad. But uh, wasn't Titanic as well? Yes, Titanic. So between like 2010. Um, I, I like Tabula Rasa, but it's more like the middle of the albums, how I would rank them. But I like 2010 and Titanic. Those were like huge ones I like going in. And um, the ones in here that like really I thought were some of the best also are this Lobby INT. I don't know if it's like interlude, but like I think that one with those like two lead singles is really good. And I was a huge fan of Old Friend. I thought that was a good like come in. Mm-hmm. And uh, the track with The Loopers is really good because um, I really liked their previous collaboration on Easter Sunday. <laughs> Shout out to anyone who knows that song. <laughs> with uh Zalopers featuring Earl and yeah I thought it was cool hearing his voice come back on I think they have a cool vibe when they like connect yeah definitely mm-hmm. I think my favorites are between the first track and the last track mm-hmm. old friend fire in the hole okay. and then um I like Titanic I don't know if it's one of my favorites but uh I don't know. I I feel like the the first and last tracks are my favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, just my top two, but in between there, I feel like it's just a good mix. Yeah, I, like, I I fucked with the album just as a listen through, so mm-hmm. you know I I wouldn't even like grab these out of a playlist. I would just put the album on, you know. Honestly, but that's just me, you know. That's not yeah. everybody. <laughs> Honestly, there's not many people that do that. Well, <laughs> like, Earl, I feel like is hard to playlist select you know like yeah even well i feel like it, you can do that more with dora songs like whenever they well, pop up yeah his old music but i'm i'm talking about his new stuff yeah, yeah. like some rap songs and uh feet of clay yeah those ones like when they kind of pop up but like i, don't know, I dig it whenever. it's such a vibe switch yeah you know you have to be sort of in the earl mood mm-hmm. or like already listening to like you know likewise stuff uh-huh. in your in your playlist I feel like because you switch to an Earl song. Yeah, if it's like some, if I have like a Drake song playing and then it goes East into like Frank. East. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, whoa, <laughs> it's a little jarring. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. But mm. um, he did a performance on Jimmy Fallon. We could go yeah. ahead and take a look at. We're not going to play the video because I'm not trying to get clapped by Jimmy Fallon. Facts. We could just do <laughs> a screenshot of it. Oh, come here. Nope. Yeah, so, yeah, just go ahead and jump in somewhere. Um, But he had a lot of really interesting imagery come up Mm -hmm. on the display behind him. You can see, um, definitely check out the performance. I was not expecting to see Jimmy Fallon have Earl Sweatshirt on, though. Yeah, but like, when when the announcement came on his Instagram, I was like, oh, dang, he's performing. But that really goes to show that Earl is still very mainstream and getting those placements and that recognition and legitimacy Mm -hmm um where he's highly respected yeah definitely and Mm -hmm. he deserves that as you know his track record proves for sure but i I thought this performance was really thought provoking Mm and cool yeah it was a lot of cool image like his i loved it how when he was spinning the bars he didn't have any like background thing like a system it was just him going and Mm -hmm. you just had the dj in the background i like the simplistic like way it was done and he just really expert execution i have tons of respect for earl especially as a live performer and uh, i thought the visuals they put on the background were cool and like how they touched in with like the themes of the album and the lyrics of that song in particular like 
uh, stuff you're putting in your body and like off uh, sick which is like the title track mm -hmm. that one had the stuff about can't go outside because got sick and, and and just like setting the feel for like the current times and how he like pretty much earl's perspective how he's been living through it you know yeah definitely i think seeing earl just out in the public eye is a great thing too because yeah. he is an introverted guy that like mm -hmm. keeps to himself like he's got a whole family mm -hmm. it's sort of akin to cole even though cole yeah. is more public facing mm -hmm. i feel like um they sort of have their like wave like okay i got a release coming so now i'm gonna come out in the public but then i'm gonna go back bit. to the private after that which yeah. i totally think is a good thing for artists separate that life you know yeah and, and keep it out of the public eye unlike some people that we're going to talk about later oh, in the episode <laughs> yeah there, there's definitely two ways to go about it <laughs> yeah and, and uh you know respect to both but one is much harder than the other i would say yeah i think that's a fun transition mm -hmm. speaking of corday as you know his a uh, he is dating a uh, very oh, yeah. uh, well-known tennis player yeah, naomi osaka right and his album from a bird's eye view has also been spinning playback in my headphones and in my car as it's released mm -hmm. recently uh same week you know january yeah. 14th as yeah. earl sweatshirt so those were competing releases i feel like it's been a minute since we've had a release with uh like two song or two like artists that I'm like such big fans of like Cohen same day or like more anticipated like single days. There's been a little bit like I think there was a big drop date. Yeah, and I think that's just gonna keep happening mm -hmm. as the release windows are getting more coveted and people are trying to clutch those spots. Um, especially as touring season's coming up. Like this is oh, right yeah, right the, the time. Summer. Yeah, this is right the time to drop your new project and then go tour and sell shows at it mm -hmm. over the summertime or fall. But I have probably listened to this two or three times at this point. It's a bit mm -hmm. longer than the Earl project. I, I mean, true. I think it's like 40 something it's minutes. It's like 45 minutes, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's got some interludes in here and some really like great tracks. I, mm -hmm. I think Corday has developed his sound to really like center where, where he knows he's comfortable and where he can, you know, create good art. Mm -hmm. And like fr from the jump, I feel like this project was hitting on a not probably not a thematic level that would be one criticism i thought like the overall title and theme was okay throughout it wasn't super prevalent pre prevalent or mm -hmm. important um but that doesn't discount the music though like the music was still very quality um there are a couple of tracks that i pulled out for my playlist but mm -hmm. um i don't know if i'm gonna revisit this as much as i revisited his last album though i don't know which i i am liking more i gotta you know give this a little bit more mm -hmm. time to churn but i enjoyed it as a listen through what are, what are you thinking now about this project from a bird's eye view mm -hmm. from corday so yeah i've listened to it but i think three times through and I've really been enjoying this. Me personally, I feel like it, I might like this better than this first one. Really? Yeah. And I was really a fan of um, The Lost Boy. Yeah. And so I feel like the there's a lot of ones on the first half I liked a lot. But I feel like especially the feature, like like early on, it's a lot of him. And then he brings in a lot of guests on the second Later half on. of the album. That's the good and, way to do it. Mm -hmm, I think it was pretty good with the songs with just him like super like one of the singles before i love that song whatever comes on my card it's like a banger love that one but then uh, the ones with features come in like gonna had a really cool feature on today um my one of my personal favorites uh c carter coach carter that one's mm -hmm. a slap even though it's only um only corday on that one and i, I thought the intro and the interlude were cool too but uh yeah and then h uh her h-e-r and Lil Dirk, they were both really good on that but I think top two is between C. Carter and Champagne Glasses with uh, Stevie Wonder and Freddie Gibbs. That one was so smooth, man. <sighs> that, yeah. I love that beat so much. Yeah, I got to say mine are either Chronicles or Champagne Glasses. Mm. Those well, those are my favorite songs. And mm. yeah, they have features, but I still think Corday delivers with his verses excellently oh, at, yeah. at, on those songs. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I didn't really care for... 
Westlake High. I, I thought that one was thought, like well, that, that one was like kind of an outro. Yeah, it was sort of like an ad lib track outro. He he was just like rapping for the first like half of it, and then towards the end, it's just like fading out of him just like shouting, yeah, or whatever kind of. Yeah, it was definitely an album cut, but mm. um, yeah, it's it's not, that was one of the ones that is not a playlist, or I'd say, but it's like I love listening to it on the album, listen through, but like yeah, it's just not a playlist spot. Yeah, and then I was just surprised that they put the outro and then they had the remix featuring Eminem right yeah. after it. I, I mean, yeah, that's a way to, you know, end it with a bang, but I would have saved the remix for the deluxe or something or just... Yeah, that's what I thought too. Like, I thought it was funny the first day it dropped where on Spotify it showed it as a disc one of the first 12 and a disc two of the last two. So it basically is a deluxe in its own right, I feel like. Oh, okay. I didn't even realize that. Okay, yeah. so treating it like a disc two. I So when I listened to it, I didn't even check that out. I yeah, just listened it, well, to I it think from it the was first only, to that I think one. it was only on there for the um, second uh, or like the first day that it was out, like that Friday. Because oh. after that, I didn't see it on there anymore. That's odd. I wish Spotify gave more control to the artists if they... I mean, I'm sure you can format it like that if you would prefer. Maybe they didn't mm-hmm. want to do that. They prefer not to. Um, but, I mean, they just bent over backwards for Adele, who was able to get the feature of shuffling removed from playing out. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, she yeah. was able to change the, like, the, the little fundamentals yeah. of the app yeah like, that, like that is a flex artists should use their pull and mm. get these platforms to accommodate the industry mm. and the creatives more importantly i think yeah those are some really cool strides being made there but overall i enjoyed this album um mm-hmm. i still think i mean i, I should probably give this a, a couple more listens oh, and threes, even but... the uh, i should mention the last track roddy rich has a great verse on there that one slaps yeah Man, see, I just wish Roddy Rich's project was as good as this one. Oh, or like as how he came in on this one too. Yeah, well, I we didn't talk about Roddy Rich's project because it sort of dropped during our hiatus in December, mm-hmm. and uh, I just thought it sounded like a lot of the same thing. Like this is oh, yeah, just like repetitive. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. but maybe that was just me, you know, riding in the car and and my, you know, just minding it in the background oh, and yeah. uh who knows but that's just sort of my opinion on that i think his verse here like made me want more music from him that was as good as this yeah yeah definitely and i think a chord a and roddy rich album would be fire oh, that would be a really fun mix that Those would be guys. a cool joint project yeah that would if make they could get really hit boy or somebody together. on that like that would be a fire project um, oh, dang. That just made me think. Imagine uh, what would Corday sound like on Alchemist? He would figure it out, dude. Yeah. I, I believe he'd figure it I out. I think that would be fun. That would be a lot of fun. Um, but, I mean, what are your overall thoughts about that project as we're wrapping it up? Yeah, like I was saying, I was a huge fan of it. I think all of the... well, And I didn't even mention Sinister with Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne had a really nice yeah. race. And of course, it was funny. Like at this point, I don't know the last time I heard a Lil Wayne feature where he didn't have like the lighter flick before his verse. Like he's been doing that every single time. It's lately. iconic now, so uh-huh. he's got to deliver. I think. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's playing the hits. I love it. But yeah, I think uh, the features really came in great. And Freddie Gibbs, he had a great verse too. He was great on that beat. Um, so yeah, the features made the second half of the album shine even more than the first but the first half i still thought there was a lot of cool uh just corday by himself like he, he made has quotable bars oh and, yeah and, and like, there's a really good some good delivery yeah he, he's a really good lines. lyricist he's funny and mm-hmm. um even the songs in the front half there are a lot of just corday individual songs they have a lot of catchy like hooks and lyrics like he's got good two-liners and uh like it really has a consistent like theme throughout it and like feel of like how Corday provides it a lot of the time on his songs where it's like family oriented and he's got like lyrics about tr- class struggle and um, a lot of the consistent themes and like helping out and like how he where he's come from and how he's gone to now as like being a successful rapper and how he's mm-hmm. like dealt with that change. Like he has a lot of very interesting perspectives. Yeah, I think so too. Um, the one thing that sort of irks me, uh, not irks me, but it's just like sort of a cliche in hip hop at this point is like, 
oh, I, I came up and now my whole life is different and I'm rich. And now, yeah. like, this, you know, suffering from success. Like, I just oh think of the gosh. DJ Khaled cover. <laughs> That's, like, a little bit of of it. That was my only, like, I feel bad like, vibe. You know what I mean? I feel like there are some artists that do it that way for sure. Yeah, but Corday but I, is I a, very think, respectful with how he approaches I, I think, it. Yeah. He doesn't make it cheap, you know? And, for sure. Well, and one song in particular that reminds me of talking about this is the one off of The Lost Boy where mm-hmm. it was – um oh, what's the name of that one where he's talking I, about all his yeah. um family matters yes, yeah, it's family yes. matters and uh yeah where he's talking about like literally like that perspective like mm-hmm. uh, everyone else ha- going through their thing and like damn i'm f- like feeling so selfish or whatever type feelings yeah uh, yeah i thought he was quite reflective on the last project where mm-hmm. this is you know still talking about what i've been th- what he's been through and you know what mm-hmm. those experiences have taught him and those lessons he's teaching um but he's not as like reflective on his life or his journey this one has a little more flex in that yeah, re- yeah exactly and you know can't blame him as he's came up for sure no yeah it fits uh, uh the trajectory pretty much mm-hmm. so i'm not surprised i think it was a good follow-up and yeah, I think it's really tough between the two, which one I like more. Well, next we have a new song and video from an artist that I've been listening to for quite a while, Big Crit. Mm. And man, uh, his new project, I am just, after seeing the cover art for it, as well yeah. as this video, I'm just excited to get more music from him. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the mm. video for the song so cool or big crit so yeah it's totally like a throwback don't yeah. play too much of this uh-huh. so you're gonna have to skip yeah, through I'll here skip through. so it's like a you know newscast and then you've got where it goes out to uh <laughs> yeah all the different guys here <laughs> the and, whole the whole squad yeah and i think one of them's trinidad james that's uh, hilarious I, I think that one if i'm not mistaken how they say in the intro but yeah it's like this newscast and then let me, it's like all chilly where's the girl uh, well, you see somewhere in there, mm-hmm. there's like this girl and it's all like icy. Oh, yeah, like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and so it's like a pretty funny like 70s style newsroom thing. And it's just oh, the way they play with it and like have it's like surprisingly good <laughs> like snow special effects while like this is going on. <laughs> some of the shots, it's funny. So, yeah, it's a pretty funny video overall and a good song. Yeah, I think the song is not to be understated in here. Like, I, I think Crit has always had just a, a dope vibe. I mean, it's very unique in hip hop. And I think his voice is, uh, you know, undervalued and sort of underrated. Um, and I, I just want people to listen to his music more. I want him mm-hmm. to be, you know, revered higher as, you know, like the J. Coles and th- those types of artists with his commercial appeal Mm -hmm. i feel he has he has a lot of potential and could you know kill that lane if he was able to get up to those heights so yeah i mean shout out big crit i love his Mm -hmm. music um forever is a mighty long time man that is one of my favorite albums of all time Mm -hmm. um his self-titled albums dope like yeah all his mixtapes are great like come on man like Big Crit's the dude. Mm, he, he's been doing it for a minute, so I feel like sooner or later he's going to be, like, uh, hopefully with this release could get some of his clout up, you know? I, yeah. I feel like it's not too far off from him, like, people, a lot more people noticing him and being like, oh, dang, this dude's got skill. Yeah, obviously when his releases come up, he's got more press and everything mm. like that, so... Um, I just hope Big Crit continues to, you know, enjoy putting out music that he mm-hmm. likes making. Like he produces a ton of his own music too. Oh, dang, so that's he, cool. yeah, he's just a great artist. I totally respect him. Mm-hmm. Um, next up is a release I just wanted to mention. I haven't even listened to this yet, but this is an artist that I've been following for a, a, quite a while, Rich Brian. So oh, yeah. his newest album, Bright Side, um, is sort of a, you know, EP, but it, it's marketed as an album. Um, but I think the subject matter that he talks about and his perspective as an Asian American is very valuable. And, um, what he brings to hip hop is unique in the way that he presents it. And yeah, you know, you might not like his flows, but it's sort of a, a, like a learned taste, you know, Mm -hmm. like, like you, you like it over time if you've learned, learned to, you know listen to him and 
hear hear his perspective. I feel like um, definitely worth hearing out. So shout out Rich Brian, but mm-hmm. I need to check this out for myself so I can give you guys a better review of this quick little project. But he hasn't really like put out music for a while. He's been oh, sort yeah. of um, offline, just not really doing much. So um, I-, I thought this was a cool release to just see popped out of the blue um and apparently it wasn't really hyped up too much other than oh, yeah. one quick music video so definitely check that out if you're interested in that but yeah. next I- we've got an artist that i'm excited because i really haven't heard his name in a while either. oh yeah so go ahead and take it from here al yeah our haji formerly known as haji beats uh odd future alumni he came out with his first single in three years he had um no brainer i believe it was in 2019 was the last like single that he put out and he put a few singles out for a few years that there and he had um his one album uh it has a super long title but if you go look at a spotify it's like right there but um he had that album in 2016 and so this is the first time he's coming out um like hopefully with an album in like six years is what we're hoping for here is what this could be a lead up to so we put out this music video. What? When did this come out? This came out the day the single came out. Okay. Yeah. So it looks pretty cool here. The different uh, visuals he's got of it, and it's all in like black and white, and all the. It's a lot of uh, there's cool images, but a lot of it's just like him going through the day and rapping. It's not like a huge like intricate type music video, but. I like the single a lot. There's a lot of, uh, like, the hook is really catchy, and he's got a lot of good bars in his verses. And, like, he does have... I like that he's writing in the physical rhyme book uh-huh. and just out, you know, doing his thing again and sharing his art. Because I feel like he's always been a, you know, m- more unique voice mm-hmm. from Odd Future, and he's just needed, like, to spend more time getting his subject matter and what he's writing and, like, focus on, you know packaging up a product or a a um you know physical release that will get plenty of buzz and plays like Mm. that that's sort of been a lot of the odd future members um like weak point other than maybe damo genesis girl sweatshirt Mm. um casey veggies yeah the whole internet yeah 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 and well frank of course but you know but there's some of those names like Haji Beats or Left Brain or Mike G where mm-hmm. you're like, huh, what was their best project or whatever? You might think of something back from 2012 or 13, but they mm-hmm. haven't had like, you know, that next project that really cemented them yeah. as their, their you know, separate career from Odd Future or whatever. Um, they, you know, have had projects, but not anything as commercially appealing or successful mm-hmm. as some of those other artists that we just named yeah the i feel collective. like mike g's been decently active but I th- he posts a lot of like uh soundcloud stuff so well, he's also a big battle rapper oh yeah so he he does like battle raps just you know showing up and getting them posted on youtube so okay yeah because i have seen like he's like had a bunch of mixtape stuff like posted but i haven't like gone around to it because they're i feel like he kind of has the opposite problem there's like a lot of ones and they don't look like you know main releases they mm-hmm. look like whatever tapes part whatever you know yeah yeah and that's you know there there's definitely a market for that but it's hard to um compete or i don't want to even say that they're competing with one another but it's hard to you know put them up against each other in a fair comparison because mm-hmm. they're not doing the same thing right they're yeah. in a different lane they're, they're in a different, different approaches yeah. yeah exactly so i respect haji's approach and i ch- i checked this out before we were able to hop on the podcast mm-hmm. and i think that this is promising i'm excited to hear what the project has um but uh, yeah i mean any other thoughts before we move on from this yeah like it was uh i, I noticed it was like different getting used to his voice or i don't know if there's mm-hmm. like more of a different flow than he had before but it was like more high pitched than i was expecting but in like a little like i don't want to say squeaky because it doesn't like sound bad but it's just like oh, how it like comes off but it, it's a cool sound and like it's very I, unique I, yeah. I still think that he is one of the most unique voices from odd future and you know mm-hmm. just paving that lane however he's going to and uh, putting out the 
the music that'll back that up mm -hmm. is going to be important and just something that a lot of the members have struggled to do, including Haji. So yeah. I'm but excited for I, like, this. I, I'm glad to see the skills still up. He's like still rhyming and mm -hmm. having the same like catchiness and like unique cadences as he's always had. So I feel like he could put out a good project and we're looking forward to it. Yeah, definitely. So the next thing we have to talk about is our upcoming releases from this week. So tomorrow, if you're watching this on Thursday. Um, and so that includes Earth Gang's Ghetto Gods album. And I was expecting to have seen some sort of cover art or track list for this. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe this isn't the release date anymore. But I thought that this was confirmed. Can we go ahead and pull this mm -hmm. up um, on their Twitter and see... Um, they say Ghetto Gods. <laughs> Sorry, I had to <laughs> we'll cut that later. Okay, ready? <laughs> yeah. So they say Ghetto Gods on the way. Uh, can we investigate and see? Does it say January? Yeah, this one says January 28th, 2022. And this is from November. This is what they have pinned. So they're keeping it cryptic as far as track listing or m more than one single, it sounds like. So, mm. um, this is being recorded on Wednesday night, so we'll see where we go from here. I'm just excited to hear what Earth Gang has after the Spillage Village mm -hmm. album, the Dreamville project, everything that they've been a part of and working on has been great, you know, in the past couple of years. So mm -hmm. this album should be really cool once we get to hear more of it. Oh, for sure. This is definitely one that I'm looking up uh, forward to in the future. And yeah, it looks like they got the video on here of uh, their new single. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so, yeah, that just came out two weeks before they're supposed to come out. And, yeah, I'm, ex like, excited how open-ended it is of the lead-up to it. Well, I like the little teases we've been getting, but I'm excited that there's a lot that I haven't heard, you know? Yeah, I, I that's sort of a double-sided coin. Like, do you want to have an idea of what the project is going to be, mm -hmm. or do you want to just enjoy it as a whole once it comes out? Like, I, I feel like I enjoy movies the same way hmm. that I like. Think don't about watch the trailer. Yeah, I, I look at like maybe like the initial trailer, and I like don't look at the rest. I'm like, I right, can't wait till that comes out. That's you know? a, that's a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, even like for some albums, if you only catch the first single and they have you know one or two after that, mm -hmm. you might just enjoy them better. Yeah, than track yeah. Listing instead. Uh, I've done that same thing before. Yeah, so um, we'll see once it drops and we'll talk about it in the next episode to give you guys an update. But that's all that we have on Earth Gang for Ghetto Gods, their album. Mm -hmm. The other release that's coming up on Friday is Kyle's It's Not So Bad. And yeah, he actually, we have a really cool, like back to back here of really cool uh, double drops. And I'm excited yeah. for this one as well. And he just shared yesterday the track listing. Yeah. So go ahead and. Check this mm -hmm. out. Click on the cover up there so you can see the main cover that he shared, and then the track listing is going to be in the next one. So hover over. Nope. Or oh, and the. Yep. There oh, you sweet. Go. Yeah, this is what he posted on his Instagram. So you can see the track listing and the features, and so it's not so bad is going to be what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve tracks. So a great number of tracks. He's only got a couple of features on here. Mm -hmm. Um. There's one that I think was notable. Can you see which one I'm talking about over there, Al? Or was Fouché on this album or was that on the other upcoming She's one? on this one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I was saying. She had our favorite collaboration with other uh, LA-based artist, Vince Staples. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's collaborating with another artist that we see here, Kyle, based in LA as well. So I'm looking forward to that track in particular oh, once time. we hear, from, hear it. So... Um, it's not so bad from Kyle is coming up on Friday. So I'm definitely going to be streaming that on release night. So tune in if you are with it, you know, heck yeah. And that brings us to the week after that two four twenty two. And so on February 4th, I am actually going to be releasing my next single and music video. First music video ever for Four Bridges by Pat G. And that's going to be on my upcoming album along the way. And I'm going to be getting a release date shared soon. And this is going to be the second single from the project. So go ahead and tune in and listen to that once it's out on February 4th. And the other project that I'm really excited for, we've been waiting 
what four years for a new project from this artist yeah the one we're talking about here is saba mm -hmm. who yeah i believe care for me was that 2018 it was 2018 it was Dang. in the spring and i didn't really start listening to his music until after that album came out mm -hmm. and about summertime to fall in 2018 and man i really appreciate saba and what he's put out and he's done a handful of singles uh, for this project as well. So go ahead oh, yeah. and take a look at, can you check on those covers? Yeah, click on those because we'll look through the art here. Um, yeah, this is one that he just released. I so believe. here's the track listing and um, it's got all these different artists on it. And man, like just just read some of these off out. Yeah, read some of these. I, I know this one in particular was one that stood out to me with uh, Black and Smino. I was like, ooh, that sounds like a, that'll be a fun collaboration. I What's like that all name? those. Still? What's oh, the name of that track? Yeah, still with Black and Smino. That oh, I'm so excited to hear how cool. those three sound together. And Mariba is also on here. Um, so both of Mariba and Black are both members of Spillage Village, that mm -hmm. same group that we were just talking about. Earth Gang is a part of. So I'm really happy to see Saba collaborating with those mm -hmm. artists because um, you know with that Dreamville connection, it's really just all love and like. I, I think their their vibes are in tune with one another. Um, if you don't know already, Saba is a Chicago-based independent artist, and we really, really like his albums, both um, Bucket List Project and Care For Me, because, man, like this guy does not miss when he comes to make an album. So Few Good Things by Saba is coming out 2422, as well as my latest single. So... It's going to be exciting these yeah. next few weeks as far as music goes. Um, we're going to have a lot to talk about as the podcast continues here through 2022. But, man, I mean, have you checked out those singles from Saba's album? or? I don't think I have. Which ones are out already? So go ahead and take a look at that genius, um, and you should be able to see. Um, oh, yeah. So the rest of the track list, it's Stop That yep. and oh, Fearmonger. So I've heard, I have heard Fearmonger. Oh, and um, Come My Way. So you said I don't three, know yeah. if I've heard the other two. I mm. don't believe I have so far. Um, I was really just waiting for the project to come out, just like mm -hmm. we were saying, uh, you know, to hear the rest of the singles in the track listing order. Fearmonger was enough, I feel like. Oh, to, for sure. To, yeah, yeah. And if this is going to be the actual album cover, I think that's super interesting too. Yeah. If this is actually going to be the album cover. I hope it is because like it, it looks pretty hard. Well, like thematically, you could you think about a lot. Mm -hmm. here, you know, like it, it's uh you know a picture tells a a thousand is a thousand worth of God. I can't talk. Yeah, sorry. A picture is worth a thousand words. So um, this image really tells a story, and you can you know churn in your brain just just looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, but flip through here and see sort of the branding for the album. So you can see this mm -hmm. is the actual, you know, type branding. Mm -hmm. And this was oh. Fearmonger cover. And then these are the other two single okay, covers. Okay, yeah, I saw the cover for this single, mm -hmm. I remember. Oh, I didn't see that one. That's cool, too. Those images are just super cool. And mm -hmm. I like how he did his calligraphy oh, wink, yeah. uh, <laughs> for the covers as well. So I'm excited to listen to the album front to back. Uh, maybe I should check out those singles before, but I, I just, you know, want to appreciate his vision as a whole um, because Saba with his albums, like I don't think there is a song that I would skip on either of his albums. So yeah. that's high praise. Yeah, he is masterful, a great storyteller, and I, I think one of the most sophisticated rappers in the game, really, with his wordplay. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, just like I was saying earlier, he has great storytelling. I feel like that's his best aspect. The new Lupe? Maybe. That, 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 that's a lot to live up to. He is sort of in that lane, though. I, I feel that. Yeah, I feel that connection. I mean, the Chicago connection also really True. really does a lot there. And I, Well, if those guys could do a song together, I think that would be awesome. So on Bucket List Project, Lupe is uh, he leaves a voicemail uh, and mm. one of the ends of the tracks, I'm pretty sure. And if they actually got a, like, a track together, that would be legendary, <sighs> but... Um, but that's it as far as new releases go. That's all we have to talk about mm -hmm. for upcoming and previous releases in this episode. And now we're going to be... 
And now we're going to be moving on to talking about different stories and things that we found interesting uh, between last episode and now. And we're sort of starting on a sad note here with the breakup of Brockhampton. I know this is going to be deeply impactful for you, mm-hmm. Al. So go ahead and take it away. Yeah, so Brockhampton uh, tweeted this the other day on the 14th, the uh, day of some of those releases coming out that we were talking about earlier, that, uh, yeah, after a couple of their performances, including Coachella, they're going to be breaking up and uh, going on, like, hiatus. Uh, I suspect, like, a lot of the members will just be going off doing their own individual thing because a lot of them already have put out, like, solo projects while, like, being a part of Brockhampton, but I don't know. I'm... Yeah, I'm disappointed because I love those guys working together, but I'm not too surprised by this. I feel like this is about a natural time in their progression of a group. It's like it was about time for those guys to like they're a bit big, like they've done what they can do. Maybe is how they could be viewing it um, as a group. And they're like, hey, we could all do really cool stuff if we just focus on our own thing instead of all focusing on this one. And I'm still honestly super excited of like what they all can do in that way so like yeah i'm disappointed they're not going to be doing everything together but individually there's a lot of cool members with really unique styles i'm interested to see how their careers end up going and i think they really took the same route as odd future where they wanted to build all of the members up and they wanted to you know collectively build some success to where they could now take this step and release independent projects and that is sort of the natural step and it seems bittersweet, even though uh, some people might have said, you know, they've had a tough time since Amir left oh, yeah. and things like that. They might have some criticism for the group. Um, but, you know, I-, I say we let all of the artists collectively go forth and, you know, express themselves how they want to as solo artists because mm-hmm. they've done how many projects together as a group now? Like, So they had, um, I'm forgetting the name of it, but they had the one before Saturation. Then those three. And then those three. And then they had um, Iridescence, I think is the name of one. And then uh, I'm forgetting the name of the other one. It's like ginger, yeah, ginger and iridescence, and now this. So that's like seven total. So that's a lot of projects. That is way more than Odd Future did together. Like yeah. that, like the volume of music. That is a lot, and mm-hmm. so they really were able to build each other up and build a fan base, and that was the mm-hmm. goal, right? And so, I, they did a great job of, like you were saying earlier, how they balance like all their mm-hmm. different members. They give everyone a different chance to shine, either sooner or later. Like. Um, you'd feel like early on it'd be like oh just give like Kevin and Amir like a bunch of stuff because like they're Mm -hmm. like super talented but they really like spread the like time usage a lot between all the guys and let the other guys like find their niche and that's great yeah yeah. well they they cultivated the talents of everyone Mm -hmm. and let that you know creative energy feed between them and I I think you can't really ask much more from a group like that Mm -hmm. to then end things amicably they say you know we still have a couple of shows and I'm sure they're going to go hard at those shows oh yeah people there are not going to forget that set you know I I saw people hating on them on Twitter it's like oh I gotta watch Brockhampton at Coachella but it's like yeah, there's always haters whenever I put on Brockhampton it's it's not for everyone it's a bit divisive (laughs) yeah and I've sort of enjoyed their hits and their more popular stuff but i'm not one to go ahead and listen and get to know every single Mm -hmm. member like i would with odd future or some other groups that i'm even more interested in Mm -hmm. Um, but i appreciate how they juggle all their different artists like i I think that is the main takeaway from their music is how they were able to balance all the artists together and create really cool Mm -hmm. music with each person's touch for on sure. the record so yeah in, in particular i'm looking forward to what bareface has to do because that dude he's a good guitar player and he has an amazing voice so like maybe the, a steve lacy type oh uh, yeah a, a few of the songs that he's had where it's like the him like solo songs on the brockhampton projects are like some of my favorites by the band in total so i'm really excited to see what he does when he's just focusing on his own music that's cool yeah. well we're about to get spicy and i mean that in more ways than one um you have no idea about this story right you you don't know anything about this drake story 
No, I haven't heard anything about this. You're going to have to... This is all new to me. Pull up this article right now, Alec. So um, is this the... Uh, the the caption or so the yeah link? let's let's first look at his Instagram post mm-hmm. so Drake posted this on Instagram if you didn't know what was going on um, what would you think so go ahead and read the caption Al and just let me know what you would think without any context um, about this post okay you can have your fifteen minutes of fame I'll take the other three <laughs> he's just like bragging like what, is this like a sub tweet at someone. This is mentioning someone or alluding to a situation that was going on in the news. Oh, what, what, what's this talking about? Pull up the article. We, 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 need, we need to see the article before I can say any more. Oh, Drake okay. accused of putting hot sauce in condom in bizarre claim by Instagram model. Oh, shit. <laughs> so Drake has been accused of putting hot sauce in a condom after a consensual sexual encounter in a hotel room oh wait so afterwards he he went to the bathroom afterwards to put hot sauce inside the condom after they were done and uh, the story goes the model decided to put the hot sauce and what was inside the condom Uh inside herself and Whoa, what the fuck in an effort to get pregnant <laughs> and drake addressed it with that instagram post in order to kill his read this out loud i, I need you to read this <sighs> the unknown internet source claims she stayed at rapper's hotel and a few weeks ago she claimed that Drizzy poured hot sauce into a used condom in order to kill his sperm after they had sex. And this only Are you happy? And this, <laughs> yeah. and this only came to light because she tried to put it inside herself, and literally, she, so she's unknown right now. People don't know who she is, but this report has come out, out, and where she has said that she put it inside herself to, you know, become pregnant, and yeah, after he was, threw it in, after he threw it in the garbage, she fished it out of the garbage. Yep, and uh, tried to uh, get Adonis a little brother or a sister. What? <laughs> Um, and I think this article is funny because they bring up Drake's lyrics uh, that, <laughs> that relate to this subject matter. So if you oh scroll gosh, down a little wait. further, you can see. Uh, She's not my lover like Billie Jean, but the kid is mine. <laughs> uh, Sandy used to tell me it t- all, all one time. <laughs> and all it took was one time. <laughs> oh. Those are obviously older lyrics from, yeah. you know, his his couple of projects recently um but it's still alluding that he's having (laughs) consensual sex with women and afraid that you know what's going to happen is what's already happened he has sex once and then he now has a child on the way so uh you know this article came out and it was all over the internet and drake addresses it by putting (laughs) this post out and sort of calling this girl attention hungry um by saying you know I'll take the rest of the time. You can have your 15 <laughs> minutes or whatever. Uh, but nobody knows who this is. And I thought this story but was... What kind of hot sauce was it, fam? Oh, my gosh. This story is too wild to not mention because... Do you, do you think it was Frank's Red Hot? I mean, I'm sure or, it was... Or do you think he's going I, I'm somewhere sure it was just like, like Tapatio? Little packet. Nah, it was just like a little packet or something, oh. you know? Maybe it was like a Taco Bell. Who, who the <laughs> fuck knows? He has a Taco Bell of um, Atomic or whatever. like or the Diablo. Hot, yeah, Diablo sauce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just got a Diablo right by the condom in his pocket. I don't even know where we go from there because that story is just wild. Like, I don't want this to come out as fake you know i feel mm. like drake addressing it with this post sort of like legitimized this uh, where yeah, he didn't way, have to do that he didn't say he didn't do it <laughs> exactly <laughs> and that's us bro like i i know that he is a ch- charting <laughs> rapper you know like b- biggest selling artist you know uh, of the digital age yeah you, you could give probably him that the, title the most successful rapper of all time i would say just by the commercially numbers. yeah commercially because i don't think he's in my top 25 of like most talented ever but he's like the number one most successful at being like rich and famous from rapping and when you're that guy you can't 
have consensual sex without having that fear, apparently, because this goes to show that it's a real fear and something that he wasn't just rapping about. He, <laughs> he was actually um, actively, you know, doing. He's which rap- is so wild. Rapping his life. Man. Well, I, I mean, hey, I respect that. I, I do that too. So, man. Yeah. But next, we're going to talk about our other favorite uh, artist that, you know, has a crazy spectacle of a public life, (laughs) Kanye West, or Ye, as uh, he is now known. Indubitably. I'm not going to talk about his new girlfriend, Julia Fox, or all of the crazy antics. The the pictures and everything. Yeah, their their pictures at, uh, what was that, Paris Fashion Week, where they just look like straight out of a comic book or something like, <laughs> i didn't see that i was just seeing uh it was like some magazine they're in they had like a photo shoot yeah well and she told a story that was highly exaggerated from the actual encounter she was saying like that the whole restaurant was clapping or so or like oh giving them all their God. attention <laughs> and then there was a video that came out where like they weren't really <laughs> even being paid attention to other than you know a handful of people Jeez. and uh yeah like I'm not going to talk about all of those antics. I want to talk about what's really important, his family life and oh, baby. <laughs> how Kanye is... So we're is, keeping up with the Kardashians. Yeah, yeah, and how Kanye is continuously driving the drama and needs to be reeled back in. Like I think he obviously is going through some stuff with his family that is not like needed to be in the public eye. Like. Yeah, that, so uh, he's a bit of an overshare like his wife. Before the story that or we... ex-wife, my bad. Yeah. Before the story that we're about to talk about, he actually went on Instagram and posted to his story um, talking, hey, I, I can't get to Chicago's birthday party. They won't tell me where he's at because Pete Davidson is there or something oh like God. that. Like he was very unhinged. And then apparently he got the address from someone else. Um, but yeah, like... All of their petty family, you know, custody things. It's all getting aired out. (laughs) Yeah, and Kanye has not stopped being in the news since Donda dropped because of this. Because of the divorce and all of the antics, um, he has continuously been in the news. And I think this article, sorry, this interview should not have taken place. Um, We have a couple of clips here to review from it. And it goes from Kanye saying that Kim has a second sex tape that he was able to recover to also threatening the family. Um, So let's just go ahead and take a look at this first one. Um, And Kim is obviously denied this. So you're going to have to unmute it. You know, how are you going to bring me to SNL and kiss the dude you dating right in front of me? (laughs) So that's also revisionist. Um, they apparently were not dating. Yeah, they weren't dating yet at that point, I don't think. And so they did a kiss on air that was just for the show. And then apparently things started afterwards from mm-hmm. what official accounts are saying. And now Kanye sort of convinced himself or has inside knowledge of something well, that it would, means he's it would, claiming this now. It would make sense to me that maybe they had like secretly been starting stuff before that like they weren't seen out in public and stuff and Kanye knew about it maybe, but it's also Kanye. He could be just making it up. Well, it sounds like he knows just as much as us, right? Like he yeah. he is trying to uh, get the address publicly on his Instagram story <laughs> of where his child's like birthday party is. Like it, it does not have yeah. to be this public, but this interview... Um, yeah, he went ahead and also said cool. that he was able to recover a laptop on a red eye flight for Kim from Ray J. And he's pretty much claiming that there's a second mm-hmm. sex tape on there where Kim's team has said, no, we have looked into it and there's nothing resembling that on the laptop. Mm-hmm. And that story alone is unhinged of. Kanye, so this was after SNL and after, you know, Kim saying, I want to get divorced. He is either reaching out to Ray J or has someone talking to Ray J says, yeah, I got a laptop from around that time. I'm going to personally go ahead and take a flight to grab that from you and protect my wife is sort of Kanye's idea at that point. Jeez. And he needs to be reeled back in, man. Like, I understand family is a very sensitive topic for the man, but... 
he threatens them in the same yeah, interview. Like, he, <laughs> he really needs to, like, Kanye, what are you doing, man? Like, he, he just needs to get his crap together. And, man, I, I just hope he's, like, oh, he just needs to get on the meds if he's off the meds. Like, Kanye, take care of yourself. You Like, everyone can tell when he's, like, wiling out and, like, this is not responsible behavior like he's got to be held accountable for this yeah and i think that's sort of the the approach i want to take you know i'm not trying to ridicule or you know complain or say that he's crazy or anything like that because mm-hmm. we Cause should like mental health is like a real problem yeah we, we don't should not to, like, stigmatize, stigmatize it, but it's like his issues at all like, he he needs to reel it back in and yeah. get back on the meds and get you know these public issues out mm-hmm. of the the public you know like or yeah. these private issues out of the public is what i meant um because that can only create division in the family and i just feel bad for the kids yeah, having to they, go through they, this. they didn't ask for this yeah exactly so yeah. they they don't deserve this man mm-hmm. take it offline but let's go ahead and look at this last clip because mm-hmm. i mean the yeah. soundbite potential for this clip though is uh, i'm a little bit greedy of, oh, even though the Gotta situation is wild oh, i think the soundbite potential for this clip is really good Right. Whoever y'all work for, whoever y'all think the family is working for, I'm telling you right now, don't play with my children. And it's talking about that or the one later on that it will happen. Both. I mean, yeah. don't play with my children and then keep it going. It's gonna yeah. be all legal. It's gonna be all legal, baby. You ain't finna gaslight me, and every night it's gonna be calm like this. I wish we could yeah. zoom into his face here because yeah, he is he's just deadpan. Like this this reminds me of the Jesus interview, the one where he's like uh yeah. talking about all that that era. He's got the gorilla and he's like, I am a god and like all that, you know? Yeah. Um I don't think this is as iconic as that interview. Well, that or one's as... really hard to live up to. Like that one's been clipped out for so many years now. So that one's meme memes. worthy for <laughs> yeah. sure. But this one is sort of like an eerie tension in the yeah. air because he's threatening, you know, legal battles to get custody of his children through this platform of a, an interview instead mm. of just talking about it or handling it offline. So I think the moral of the story is we hope Kanye gets well and, you know, takes care of himself yeah. and his family. Yeah, for his family and for his kids. Like, come on, man. Yeah, man. I mean, we love his music and apparently he's working on Donda too. We've yeah, seen I've some, been hearing about that. We've seen some chatter online and people posting about it that are around Kanye. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I even want like a follow up to that project i would rather him sort of do a different titled project yeah, get get to a different era yeah like you don't need to do a donda 2 you can do something else like mm-hmm. he, he doesn't have to like kanye's never pushed himself into a box or a lane you know yeah like he he's not really one to do se- like sequels exactly. either other, since like the original trilogy of like graduation but that it mm-hmm. wasn't like a this and this too it was like a progression thing like all the way up through so I don't know. I think that would be a weird move. I don't know if this will like end up being released soon, how it's like seeming, or if this will be another like Yandi situation yeah. where it never comes out, or just another delayed one. Like with Kanye, you really never know. It could be early for all we know. Exactly, and he could just be promoting this and say Donda two, and then we w- don't hear from him in two years or something. Like yeah. Kanye's also someone where. He's in the spotlight and on these news and stories and things, and then he dips out, and then we yeah. don't hear from him for a while, even though people are like really hungry for that media coverage of Kanye. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't really think I want to see a Donda 2. I would much rather him just progress. Yeah, give it some space. Yeah, mm-hmm. get, give it you know a, a year to breathe, and then give us something new. Give us a mm-hmm. different theme and he gave us the deluxe so yeah and that was like 30 tracks in total like we have a lot to sift through right what now. more could we need yeah. right so the last thing we were going to talk about mm-hmm. here is a segment that we added in the last episode and it's sort of the inspiration for that channel we were talking about at the beginning mm-hmm. here um but we're going to do a little bit of a nba and bulls update from al as far as standings and the picture in the conference so take it away yeah, so for the Bulls right now, um, them individually, 
it's been a bit of a rocky stretch of the season right now. They've been going through a ton of injuries and um, a, a lot of, like, they haven't been having the COVID protocols as much anymore, but, like, Lonzo is down for a few weeks. Um, now, the most recent one, Derek Jones Jr., is out for a few weeks. You know, Pat Williams, he's been gone all year. And so they've had a lot of, in Caruso now, he got hurt again by Grayson Allen on like a terribly dirty play. That was like one of the big things of the last week. And Grayson Allen only got a one game suspension on that, which like we're losing Caruso for six to eight weeks on like an obviously like flagrant call that he got kicked out of the game for. And only they lose him for one game. I think the consequences should like match the outcome of like what he did to our player. And so Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get too much into that. I hate Grayson Allen. But, um, yeah, the Bulls have been kind of short-staffed lately, but they've had a lot of big performances by DeMar Rosen and Zach Levine's coming back now. So it's looking like they might be able to get back on track with some of their star guys, but it might be a little bit before they're really able to get back on track. It's going to be like six more weeks till we have Caruso, and he's been a huge defensive player for us. But uh, their spot in the East overall um i've been uh like monitoring the standings as they've been going throughout the season they were at number one for a long time but they're now around the two three spot with uh, other big names in the east like brooklyn and milwaukee and philadelphia and miami and i don't know i feel like listening to a lot of the sports podcasts i listen to a lot of them are giving the other teams like a chance at like oh yeah they're real contenders but like still not believing in the bulls because so, of their roster still discounting the bulls as they did in the off season mm-hmm. as they did you know throughout the season as yeah. everyone's been proving them wrong you know as the mm-hmm. win streak happened and all of those different storylines people still can't wake up and like give the organization the credit it deserves even yeah. as they've had these injuries and covid protocols mm. persevering through it all and fi- like getting those wins yeah. still like come on man yeah they're, they're respected as like a great regular season team right now but like a lot of people are saying like oh i don't think they have a legitimate shot to win the title like with the way they are right now and a lot of people are saying that the bulls should go for a trade with possibly getting someone like jeremy grant to like get a lot of size and defense And there's been a lot of debate on this, uh, ideas of getting rid of guys like Patrick Williams, who is like the guy we picked number four overall um, just two years ago, and um, seeing if we can get Jeremy Grant to help now and abandon the future a little bit. And I don't know, I'm kind of back and forth on whether or not I think this trade is a good idea. Like, for one thing, it's the number four overall pick for Jeremy Grant. Like, Jeremy Grant's a good player, but he's not an all-star, and if we're investing when Pat Williams with the number four pick, I think it's really early to like give up on him two years in. So, but I do also see the side where it's saying, like we with our aging veterans, we don't know how long our window is going to be. We should maximize our roster now and like try to get as close to a championship level roster as we can. Like I see that argument too, but I feel like I'm not sure if getting Jeremy Grant or a player of his caliber is like enough that would like get us over teams like the Bucks or the Nets with superstar players in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like getting Patrick Williams back in the playoffs, which it's looking like his injury, he might be back in time for the playoffs, if not sometime during the playoffs. I think if we could get him back and have him playing at a hundred percent, his defense would also be very valuable. And I don't know. It's really an idea of do we think we can extend this window or should we all maximize on it now? That's a tough balance to strike. And Uh I feel like it is one that they've sort of gone back and forth on, right? Because Mm -hmm. they, on one hand, have these veterans like DeRozan and Vukovic. Mm -hmm. And um, on the other hand, there's new players like Mm -hmm. Patrick Williams and even like Lonzo Ball, even though he's been in the league Mm -hmm. for a couple years Yeah, he's still pretty young. Or or guys like uh, Kobe White or Io Dusumu, who's a rookie this year. Yeah, yeah, that would be more apt. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's tough because as Bulls fans, it's like, oh, no, not another rebuild year, right? It's like, God, are are we going to develop these guys that we have and we think Mm -hmm. can take us there? Or are we going to just work on these young guys? It's, you know, a, a tough decision that there are, you know, really closely coming up on here yeah. as the season's wrapping up mm-hmm. yeah so we'll see 
And Kobe White, I don't know. There's been trade rumors with him too, but he, I think, has really, he has some off nights now and again, but I think he's really shown his value as mm-hmm. a bench scorer and especially playing next to Ayo Dosumu. I think that's yeah. a great combo of the bench guards where uh, Ayo is great on defense and he's shown to be like a very good feel for the game passer and like knowing where people aren't and just like moving the ball around in our system. And so I think those two are, have been a really good match together and there's a lot of potential for those guys. Well, that's awesome. And if you're looking forward to hearing more takes from Alec as far as Chicago sports go, definitely give us recommendations for what we should name that channel and how we should go forth with structuring that content, whether it's a couple of videos a week that are about 10 minutes long addressing different things that are going on or maybe just a weekly, you know, half an hour podcast style Mm -hmm. episode. Um, Just let us know what you'd be interested in watching as we're, you know, developing our content and trying new things. But that'll bring the end of Boom Bat Bros episode number 14. So Mm -hmm. it's been another great one. I feel like we always have fun things to talk about here as far as, you know, our experiences listening to the music and our takeaways, as well as different fun stories and crazy things that we found Mm -hmm. on the Internet. So it's a good time to be a hip hop fan. Yeah, it definitely is. And I'm looking forward to trying out live streams Mm -hmm. on this channel, as well as getting more clips up on our Boom Bat Bros Clips channel. Um, We're doing some things on social media as far as clips, but I want to get some YouTube, you know, five to ten minute ideas of what we, you know, we're talking about throughout the episode Mm -hmm. out. So, yeah, we're going to be working on a lot of stuff throughout this year, and I'm just excited as our podcast is progressing. So definitely leave a like and subscribe if you made it all the way through this episode and you're watching on YouTube or Mm -hmm. you're listening on a podcast platform. Give us a follow. Yeah, five stars on Spotify. Yeah, rate us five stars. Thanks for remembering that, Al. Um, And yeah, I mean, anything you have to say before we close out this episode? My, I mean, I think we've been having a lot of fun episodes lately. We have some cool um, albums in the pipeline here. So I think we have a really good time here. It's a good time in hip hop. And I'm really excited for the opportunity for getting the like my own Bulls basketball. And I could do even like sports in general on a new spinoff podcast. I feel like we have a lot of cool stuff we can get going. Definitely. Go ahead and follow us at Boom Bat Bros on all social media channels and keep up to date with what we're doing on our personal channels as we get those developed throughout the year. You can find me on all streaming platforms on, as Pat G or on all social media channels as at Pat G563. Yeah, I'm at Alec Galandi on uh, Twitter, so follow me on there. If you want my, uh, <laughs> a lot of the times I'm just tweeting during Bulls games, so <laughs> you'll get a lot of that on there. There we go. And definitely check out our different YouTube stuff as it'll be uploaded on the platform. All the links will be in the description. So yeah, it's been a good one and we'll see you next time on the Boom Bap Brothers podcast. Peace out, guys.